Today we're talking breathing for running. Is there a correct way to breathe? Is there a way of improving how we breathe? And what different strategies could we be implementing with our running? I'm Devlin Eden from coachparry.com and I'm gonna hand over to Shona to get us started. The question that we get asked the most about breathing is, is whether it's better to breathe nasally or, or through your mouth. For me at the moment, the nose isn't an option because I have a bit of a cold, so everything is going through the mouth, but we're talking running here, not, not generally breathing when you have a cold. I think the reason we get asked this question so often about which, which one is better, nasal breathing or oral, oral breathing, is because people are trying to maximize the amount of oxygen that they, they're getting into their system. Really, the limiting factor isn't necessarily around how much oxygen you're getting in, it's more based around what's going on at a cellular level and how that oxygen is being utilized. And we're gonna to touch on that in a lot more detail in this video as well. So physiologically or biologically, your nose is really what is, has been set for you to breathe, okay? And the reason for that is there are nasal hairs there, so that when you're breathing in cold air, it warms up the air before going into your lungs. And so biologically, when we're not running, we are using, using our noses, and, and that's what the nose is for. When we are running, we need to get more air in, and as a result, we tend to try and use both. There are a few studies that have been done on which is better, they're not great studies, they're very, very small populations and they haven't been really, really good studies. So the, the, the science is pretty much out on whether nasal or, or, or oral breathing is, is better. Very often I find that it's, it's a personal choice as to what you prefer to use, but predominantly you are going to go for what is, is biologically your default, which will very often be the nose and perhaps complement it with a bit of oral breathing at the same time. So Shona's already discussed two possibilities, whether it's mouth breathing or nasal breathing. Some of the other strategies that can be implemented are something known as rhythmic breathing. So the idea of rhythmic breathing is how do we get our inhalation and exhalation to time with our running stride. Most of us find ourselves running, whether it's conscious or an unconscious thing, find ourselves breathing and exhaling on two strides and then inhaling on two strides. So it's very sort of even sided. And what ends up happening with every foot strike we make on the ground, it's a sudden jolt to our body, sudden jolt to our lungs, so we almost forced into a bit of an exhalation. Now by breathing in on two strides and out on two strides, we tend to exhale on the same side of our body the whole time. And there has been a little bit of talk and potential science that has pointed to a relatively small risk of injury by breathing on the same side every time or rather exhaling on the same side every time. And that could come down largely to our posture and how we are handling ourselves and keeping ourselves upright every time we exhale. So the idea of rhythmic breathing is to mix that up a little bit where we inhale for three strides, exhale for two strides. Inhale on three strides, exhale on two strides. So the idea here is that we are exhaling on alternating sides of the body. As you can imagine, it's gonna probably take a little bit of thinking and conscious decision making while you're doing it for the first couple of times. But that is one of the, the ideas to try and mix up what side of the body we are exhaling on. Another option that we can implement is what we call belly breathing. And this is something that probably is going to be better off for you to be practicing while you're sitting at home, uh, while you're at work, rather than necessarily implementing it in your runs at the time. Belly breathing is really a deep inhalation and we're trying to engage the diaphragm. So by engaging the diaphragm, we're opening up more of the lung capacity. So we're allowing more air into the lungs. So it's really deep. When you breathe in, you should feel that stomach expand. And when you breathe out, obviously everything contracts. So that's the idea and what is called belly breathing. The last one and another strategy that you could implement while you're sitting at home and really more of a training tool is what we call box breathing or four-sided breathing. Now this, as you can imagine, is gonna be a little bit more tricky when running and why I suggest doing it at home as uh, uh, training the lungs, training the respiratory muscles, you will inhale, so a very deep breath, like a belly breath, and then you will hold that for the count of four, three, two, one, and then a slow exhale and hold that for the count of four, three, two, one. As you can imagine, the idea of this is the more you inhale and hold that, the more time for oxygen perfusion, so we're allowing the oxygen to get around the body a little bit more. But as I said, you can probably imagine while you're trying to run, and especially once the intensity in your running starts to pick up in a certain session, 
you then struggling to hold your breath for the count of four or exhale for the count of four. The idea of these different strategies is really to be playing around with it while you're at home, while you're sitting watching TV, having dinner. And the idea here is really just to train the respiratory muscles. So those are the little muscles in between the ribs, uh, getting your lungs working, inhaling fully, exhaling fully, where we are training those muscles to breathe better and handle the air that is coming through. So there are a couple of tools out on the market that might suggest better breathing or help us improve getting air into our, our lungs. One of the ways might be internal nasal dilators, so little nose pieces that fit inside our nostrils. Other ways you may have seen are the nasal strips that sit and stick over the top of the nose. And the idea of these are to dilate the nasal passages, so to open up so that there's no restriction in the nasal passages and we are getting more air into the body. There has been a bit of research around these things that they are well uh, well handled so people can run with them and they're relatively comfortable but there's no real evidence to point that these tools are going to make you a better runner or improve your running in any way as much as the marketers will say these tools whether it's the nasal dilators whatever you might be using are going to make you a better runner there's no science out there that points to this being evident so this all leads us to why do we breathe and the main function of breathing is literally to extract oxygen from the atmosphere through our lungs and into our bloodstream that is literally the main function of breathing and then we obviously also need to do the reverse process and that is to get the carbon dioxide out now you've heard in this video that there are different mechanisms you can use to perhaps get more oxygen uh, into your lungs, how you can improve your, your lung capacity, how different types of breathing or breathing through your nose or mouth can change certain things in your actual blood to allow you to, to offload more oxygen and so on. But in reality, the biggest limitations for your body's ability to, to utilize oxygen are the rate at which you can get the oxygen out of your lungs through the alveoli and into the bloodstream. Oxygen carrying capacity of the bloodstream and that is impacted heavily by your number of red blood cells and then very importantly your body's ability to utilize oxygen and use it in energy metabolism lies in the number of mitochondria that are inside your muscles. The limiting factor there is the type of training that you do and by doing very easy running you develop that aerobic capacity by encouraging the development or creation of more mitochondria. So at the end of the day you need to breathe in the way that is most comfortable for you but it's highly unlikely that your limiting factor when it comes to breathing is the thing that is preventing you from getting enough oxygen to do the exercise that you need to do. If you want to learn how to train better to get the best out of the oxygen that you are providing to your body, click on the video on screen. If you like the video, hit the like button. Thanks for joining us.